Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be your name when the sun shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Give and take away, give and take away. My heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. Forsaken, take me, Jesus. 
they tell me how you was so much shame to love me and when the heavens fade away and all your scars still remain and forever they will say just how much you love me and I want to say forever my love forever my heart forever my life is yours forever my love forever my heart forever my life is yours forever my love forever my heart forever my life is yours forever my love forever my heart forever my life is yours Jesus, we just bring this service to you this evening. Wherever you're watching from, I just pray that you would feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Close your eyes. Dance with him, your Savior, because he's alive and well. Call out to him in this day of trouble, and he will rescue you. And just pray that you would bless the words of that Pastor Jerry speaks to us this evening, that your anointing would fall upon him, that you'd open up our ears and our hearts to hear your word. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study, and uh, thank you to Don for doing a few songs for us. And I just want you to know that during this time, if you watch the news, you keep hearing this one thing, which I don't want to say. But we're all in it together. We're all in it together. We hear that every time you watch anybody. We're all in it together. The one thing that we're all struggling with is, I think, and I've been thinking about this, is what I want to talk to you about, is our thought life is difficult during this time. We're uncertain about our future. When we go back to work, if we go back to work, if it's the same country we were in before, or if things are different. I mean, these are the things you hear every day. And and uh, we've now saw, I saw the interview of uh, people that recovered from COVID on with the president. And we know some people are getting better and a lot of people are. And we just don't know. Now the big thing's focused on the economy and all of that. But I wanted to, I, I've been, if I just went through, like I'm in, I should be in Philemon. But I'm going to save that for later. And I want to talk to you about something that I've said at U-Turn many times and probably in the church many times. And that is really how to survive difficult times the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and we know that but it has to do with what we think about and what we're thinking about now and and we're not seeing each other so unless you call me or send me a note I don't know how people are doing I mean I can assume some are okay and some are struggling and we're told that there's a higher rates of suicide I don't know if that's true I mean I, I think it is overall I don't know here but the point is, how can we help each other through this time? And really, how can you help yourself during this time? So I'm going to give you three little tips on how to do that, that I think people are struggling. And we've been getting some feedback at the church. And thank God for that notes and people, you know, sending us emails about, you know, what they've been watching or whatever. So I think these are things that we're all going through. And I am going through it in a different way than you are, but we all are. So as a pastor looking at an empty church and the church not being open and now there's conflicts over that. You know, there are churches that tried to have drive up services or drive through like uh, Robert Schuler did years ago in Garden Grove, California. He had the drive up church and he'd be out and they, they had the speaker. It was a drive in. He actually took over a drive in 
And uh, if you don't know what a drive-in is, you're not that old. But a drive-in movie theater is where you drive in, the screen's outdoors, they hook the speaker on your car, and of course those speakers are old time. But he started church that way, and now people are trying to do it where everybody goes on their cell phone, and then the preacher's talking to them, and they're in their cars. And there was a big controversy in California about that, and Nevada, where the governor said, you can't do that. So we're struggling and thinking, what should we do? Is there a point where we we disobey the government? Is there a point where we say we're doing whatever? And, and so it's a hard time for the church, even though it... I realize this is not an attack on the church per se. Everyone is shut down with some exception, uh, whatever's deemed to be essential. And I noticed this last week the governor of Nevada closed all the golf courses. Now I'm assuming California's already closed, but uh, I guess it's not enough social distancing. You hit a 200-yard drive and the people are 200 yards behind you. But anyway, the golf courses are closed. So as we think about what we can do and what we can do, it, again, the key thing is, is what we think about. So uh, let's pray and then we'll, we'll get into this. Father, give us encouragement in our thought life of the things we think about and help us, Lord, to make it through this time. And we just ask for your guidance and help as we work through this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if you have your Bible, turn to Philippians chapter 2. And the first thing here is that starts off about what do we think about. Okay, Philippians 2 1. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. And, and so the, the point there is, what do we, how do we think? About, is there any consolation? Is there anything good in where we are? Now, if you're the kind of person that likes to just sit on the couch and watch TV and watch whatever shows are on and maybe that's where you've gotten to and maybe you've been injured or whatever for you this is a good time because you're you're enjoying it you're watching uh, maybe you're watching reruns of 24 with Jack Bauer you know there's like five seasons I mean you could be sitting there and I remember when that was on any of you remember this that it went through the church like people in church were watching episode after episode I mean like staying up all night they're like I can't I gotta watch the next one in that case being shut in is is okay for you. If you're an outdoor type person and you want to go do something, you've got to be careful where you do it now because the parks are closed, the rivers, the lakes are closed. I mean, you could find some place to sneak out and go, but you know what I'm saying. You have to be careful now. And so that's been greatly curtailed. If you're involved in any kind of sports like golf or tennis, you can't forget it. So depending what you're doing it's about what you think about. And he says, if there's any consolation in Christ. So here's the point. Can I think about Jesus Christ and what he did for me? He died for my sins. He rose again. We covered that on Easter. And the point is, can I think about the Lord? Think on those things that are true, pure, and holy. So I can think about those good things, even though if I'm watching the news... And most of us probably are. I mean, we're, we're watching about, it seems like every day, Dr. Fauci, you know, Mike Pence, the president. Uh, and then, you know, we got the Democrat side where they're, and everybody's chiming in on something where I'd probably be better off if I just think about Jesus and what he's done in my life and praise God that I'm alive and I'm praying for my missionaries, I'm praying for the church, I'm praying for other Christians saying, I know this is hard, but I've got to start thinking on those things that are good and thinking about, I've given this message so many times down at U-Turn for Christ and U-Turn for Christ is a facility that's for people in, involved in drugs and alcohol trying to overcome that through the Lord and I tell them you've got to start thinking about what God's done for you think about the good things in your life don't be hung up on your trial coming up or the people that messed you over in a drug deal and all those things you've gone on 
think about the things that are good. And how is it a person could be in jail or prison and be thinking about God and actually when they get out, they're actually better off than when they went in because their thought life's been really good. On the other hand, if I'm just watching the news and I'm sitting there over here, let's call for Fauci's resignation. And over here, oh no, he's done a great job. And I'm just sitting there going, you know, our country shut down. Thousands have been killed. And this virus has spread to every country in the world. And it's a very dark time. And then the good, I could look at these people that are out delivering food or that are helping their neighbors or whatever. That they're always, There's always some good going on. So if I were to focus on that, I'm actually better off than hearing the negative over and over and over. So it's not about positive thinking, although I'm, I'm not against positive thinking. I think the church has overreacted against positive thinking. I think we've overreacted. In other words, we go back to Norman Vincent Peale. I think his book was The Power of Positive Thinking. And then we got Robert Schuller, and uh, he was a positive thinking kind of a pastor. And he's got two, his son and his grandson are both still preaching. Uh, maybe in the same vein. I don't know exactly, but but uh, it's not bad. And then we have, uh, what's his name? Joel Osteen's kind of a positive thinking kind of a guy. So sometimes we maybe overreact because we're more on the fundamentalist side, like we're Bible preaching, you know, we just preach the Bible. And, but you know what? I'll, let me ask you a question. Would you rather be around somebody who's positive or somebody who's negative? You know, I was in the hospital not too long ago and there are certain people that really you don't want to see. Now, you can all be honest. You're at home watching me. Uh, there are times where somebody's going to come in and say, did you not do this? Or did you eat too many cheeseburgers? Did you? I mean, you know, they're just hammering you about what they think is helping. And, and then somebody who just says, hey, we're praying for you. God's going to bring you through this. We thank you for your... You know what I mean? It's different. Which one would you rather be around? Uh, Jesus, while not a positive thinking pastor per se was also positive because he was talking about thinking about him and what your life could be, thinking about what God could do in your life. So I'm, I'm just put, trying to put a little balance here that it's not wrong to think, because he says, therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, any comfort, any fellowship of the Spirit, fulfill my joy by being in the same mind. Like, let's think about what God's doing. See, that's the point. And in a time like we're in now, where it's very difficult you know, stores are limited now. I, I saw the latest story today, if you didn't hear it, where now they want to limit uh, stores like Walmart, Target, and Costco. Things that you don't need, they don't want you to be able to get now. That they want you to order on Amazon or online. So in other words, if you need tools, if you, though, you're going to have to go online. See, I think there's, now see, there's an overreach going on. Like, in other words, we're already limiting how many can go in, but now they're going to say, okay, Walmart, put all that stuff away. We don't want people to be able to get that because then that gives them another reason to go to the store. That's the latest thing. Now, if I'm thinking about that, I'm going, what happened to Paul Revere in the Midnight Ride? Like, we need to probably another one. But it's the idea that they're trying to mitigate and control the coronavirus. That, that's why they're doing it. So again, there's always something going on. But if I'm just thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ and that he's coming again and I'll be in heaven with no sickness, no sorrow, no suffering or, or no pain, then I'm really not worried about what goes on at Walmart. Uh, yesterday, because we don't have one right here in our community, but down the hill there is. And so uh, I had the opportunity to go through in and out Now I'm telling you, in and out is, they're booming you can't go in and eat, but people like to eat out. They do. And so you drive through the internet, slide it for like three or four blocks, and you know where they have people outside that take your order? They started doing that. No, they're way out. They're like blocks down the road because they're prepared. And so in and out has adopted or adapted, I should say. They've adapted to these times, and they're pro I'm, I would imagine they're doing really well right now. And that's another, you, you wanted to, you know, you wanted a double-double, fries and a shake or whatever you wanted you can still get it so it depends how you look at it. if you think oh I can't go in and eat it well you can still eat it you remember when you were a teenager I mean I have weird thoughts but you know remember when you first got your car and you could drive or your parents car do you remember that you wanted to do everything in the car 
Uh, the idea of going into a restaurant, no, I'll take the drive through every time. And you drove through and you sat in your car and ate, you know, uh, maybe you drove to the beach and looked out or whatever it was. I remember that. My first car was a 62 Chevy Corvair, Ralph Nader special. He killed the Corvair. But I, at that time, I was, this is great. And you could stay in your car all the time. But again, see how we thought then? Our thinking was, I'm going to go drive. I'm going to drive my car. You weren't thinking, oh man, I can't go in. I can't go to the store because I went to a little market the other day and it's very small and there's two people at a time allowed in. And the rest are lined up outside. But you know what? And we're all trying to do the six foot thing. You know, you're over here, you're over here. But they're talking. They're a great chance to share Christ with these people. I, I had a chance to share with a guy who drove up in a dump truck and he's waiting, and I go, yeah, I think there's two in there now. And, and I said, do you have any religious background? I started talking to him about his faith. It was great. I love it. So even though we have restrictions, we can still do it. So don't get so hung up on where we are and how bad it is. You know what? We, can, we could complain about the weather. You know, if you're, if you're a skier, snowboarder, you like winter sports, it's really hard to complain about snow because you want it to snow. If it doesn't snow, there's no skiing. So... But then as, as the sea, we're in April now. So in April, as it starts to get warm, you get excited about, hey, it's getting warm. You know, we hit 50 today. Uh, you know, someday down the road, we'll hit 70. And you, you, it's the, what you think about. So if there's anything, and so that, and then I, I want you to think about this, is there's a place where we have to work through our salvation. Now, we can't work for our salvation. But Philippians 2.12 says, Therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Working it out means you are working through things that are going on in your life. Now, we have to work through this coronavirus. We have to work through being off. We have to work through being the church being closed. We have to work through the potential of unemployment and all that. And if you think about when you go to the gym, people still use this term. Uh, I'm, I'm going to work out. We use that term. Well, when you work out, what are you doing? You're moving your joints. You're moving your muscles. You're working out. Isn't it interesting that Jesus says, work out your salvation. Like when you first realize Christ loves you, died for your sins, he's coming back, and your life as it has been is not right, and you have to work out some things. You finally, well, I guess I can't do that. I can't treat people like that. I can't, maybe I, I can't use things I used to use. Maybe I can't do things I used to do. So I've got to work some, some things through. And he says, work out, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Like, I got to work through this. Maybe it's the way you treat people around you. The Bible says, love your neighbor over and over and over. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Well, when you first come to Christ, you might be around somebody that's difficult to be around. I, I'm sure, listen, let's be real here. We all have people that we're around that are difficult. In fact, you're difficult for somebody else. But the Bible says we got to work through that. So uh, if I have to work with somebody who's uh, maybe, uh, maybe they're really sensitive. They're hypersensitive. And maybe I'm more matter of fact. And so, but we have to work together. So I'm going to have to work out and they're going to have to work it out. I, I watch these uh, interviews with the president every, it's unbelievable. I, I, I don't know, I, I've seen so many now, but it was some, it's like a, it's like a match. It's like a wrestling match. And why this and why that? And, 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 the, and, the, and then you have Dr. Fauci and he's giving their answers. And it's like, you know, we have to get along in Christ. So as Christians, I may have to work through that you know, when you get married, they always say things that you've done as a single person, now you have to get used to as a married person. For example, uh, do you put the cap on the toothpaste every night? Do you put it over here? I mean, you know how we may be different. Uh, I've got so many stories about guys that are basically slobs and they get married and their mom's picked up after them their whole life. And uh, their dirty socks, their dirty clothes, they just throw on the floor. And the wife, who's neat as a pin, eventually says, you know, honey, are you ever going to put your socks in the dirty clothes basket? And well, no, you know, that's your job. It's not exactly my job. 
Uh, so you have to work through. You have to kind of work through. There's all kinds of stories. I'm not preaching on marriage at the moment. But the point is, when you move in with somebody, it's a little different. Hopefully it's really good. Hopefully you love each other and you work through things and you do things that are different and everything works out for the best. But you and I know there are times you're going to have to work through this. You go to a new job and you've got to work with other people. You have to work through it. So our salvation, Lord, help me to think on those things. Don't, Lord, I can't just think about the negative. I've got to work that out. I'm going to have to work on that. I'm going to have to be positive about my faith. So I'm working through these issues. So that, that's very important. And then, then the other thing that we're, this is right where we are. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 starts with this. But what things were gained to me, these I've counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the experience of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, but which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness of God, which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed with death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Now look at verse 12. This is very important. Not that I've already attained it or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I press on. I move forward. And it be, be, uh, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, so in the midst of this coronavirus, we need to press forward and look at like, okay, I'm not happy with the church situation now. The churches are closed, but Lord, what do you have through this? I'm looking forward to it. Maybe there's something that's going to happen as a result of this that will be better. So I'm looking forward. I'm looking ahead. But ultimately, I'm looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. So I'm, I'm keeping my eyes on him. Like, Lord, you're with us now. You haven't left us. You're still there. So I'm looking at you, and I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward in my faith. You know what? You can grow right now in the midst of the coronavirus. You can grow tighter to the Lord than you ever have been. You can read the Word more. You can pray more. You can meditate on God. And especially those of you that have more time. I, I watched on the Weather Channel where they said, you know, if you're struggling with what to do, this is a great time to clean your house. <laughs> this is a great time to clean your garage. And I'm thinking, okay, but it's also a great time to draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. So do you see the attitude? It's the attitude of looking forward during a really dark time. So I maybe have a limited issue with medical. You know, a lot of other medical issues now, if you call... They basically tell you, just don't come in. We don't want you to get the virus. So no matter what else is wrong, unless you're having a heart attack, just stay home and relax. So people are not going in like they used to. So that could be a problem. If you've got a, a medical condition, that could be a problem. But on the other hand, what can I do? I can focus on the things of God and what's happening. And I've had uh, several discussions with other pastors. They're all struggling right now and they're, they're all going through tough times. But uh, we want to make sure that we're putting out the message to our folks and anybody else that I can do all things through Christ and Christ is with us through this time. The government can only do so much. I love the way they try to point fingers at each other. They can only do so much. It's an illness. It's a disease. It's a problem. What we can do is hold out the Lord Jesus Christ and keep reaching forward. So in the midst of the COVID-19, is that what they call it, 19, is I'm going to keep reaching forward and forward and forward and saying, God, now I know this is hard. Is God, I'm going to move forward. And I'm going to look at what's going to happen in my life in the future with you because you said you would be with me always till the end of the age. So I know Jesus is with me, so my mind needs to be focusing on that. Not focusing on when can we go back to, you know, a pizza place. Or when can we can get it now. But when can we go in there? Or, or whatever it might be. 
When do I go back to work? I understand these are major things, but we've already covered. Worry doesn't help anyone. Don't worry that a, a flower can't change. The lilies of the field neither toil or spin. And so, so worrying about what's going to happen is not really helping anybody, but focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ is what will happen. And if you look at gain and loss in this passage, 7 to 13 of, of Philippians 3, gain and loss. I do not count myself to have, to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. So we're going to remember normal life, no matter what you do. You're going to remember it. But I don't have to dwell on it. I can look forward, like what's happening in the future, what's going to happen, how is this going to affect, maybe Matthew 24 and Revelation 17 and all that, maybe it is coming about. Now, no man knows the day or the hour, but I need to be preparing myself. The Bible talks about one world government, one world religion, and one world economy. Those are knocking on the door, and in some cases pushing the door in. But if I stood up and said, Jesus is coming back tomorrow, people go, see, the, those Calvary Chapel guys, they're crazy. All they talk about is the rapture of the church. But no, what I'm saying is, these scriptures are preparing us that there will come a day when Jesus will return. And the book of Revelation describes what will happen on planet Earth. And I believe this COVID-19 is just preparing the way for governmental, world governmental, religious things, all kind of working together. And if you haven't seen it, we're seeing it now. Other countries are working on a cure. We're working on a cure. We're working together. I mean, we can question China, and there's a lot of questions. I, I'm not here to get into that. But on, on one hand, then China actually sent help to Italy. They sent doctors over there. So it's weird how we work together. We fight, and then we work together. And the last days, the Bible actually describes that uh, kind of a one world system and a one world uh, economy. Our economy is tied in together already. And the Japanese yen, if it's affected, we're affected. And so we're, we're, we're getting into that one world situation and, and uh, we can look at problems. But what I'm saying is, we need to look at God's word and just with discernment say, God, you know, help us to be prepared for your return, regardless if it's right now or not. Now, very interesting verse in Matthew 24 that says that if you knew the thief was coming, you would have gotten ready. So let me ask you a question, Christians, if you're a Christian today. Uh, if the Lord came back right now, would you be going, well, I didn't think it was now. Well, you don't know when it is. The Bible says no man knows the day or the hour, only the Father in heaven. So you don't know when it is, but you do have the obligation to be ready. If the Lord came right now in the rapture of the church and you knew you'd be in heaven with no sickness, sorrow, suffering, or no pain, I guarantee you, you'd want to go. But a lot of us are, are kind of ready, but not really ready, even though... The Bible says in Matthew 24, there will be pestilences. This is a pestilence. This is a disease. We've seen other ones, Ebola. We've seen uh, swine flu. We've seen others where they're coming more and more and more and more. Well, the Bible says that's going to happen in the last days. So if we're in the last days, we don't have to say when it is. We have to say, let's be ready and let's be attentive. Let's be looking around and go, man, it seems like we're getting, you know, this one world and we're getting one. We should be ready about it. Rather than me saying it's coming right now next week. I mean, look, I don't know when it is because no one knows the day, or the, hour, the day or the hour. But the point is, God has given, if, if you looked objectively at his word, anyone, you would see that the events that have happened in the last hundred years, couple hundred years, you would say, it seems like we're in the end times. But it also tells us we don't know the day or the hour. So we should be giving a message of hope, a message of Jesus' return. If, you know, Christians all say, if you ask in any, any, almost any church, do you believe Jesus is coming again? They all say yes. But the difference is, well, when do you think it is? The more prophetic-oriented churches that believe in prophecy are saying, we believe we're right in that zone right now and we believe he could come any moment. We're still saying we believe. Only we're saying we think it could be imminent. So what can we do during this time? We can think on those things 
that are true, pure, and holy. We can think of the things of Jesus Christ. You know, isn't it interesting? Jesus is coming back. So someone could say to you, what's going on with this virus? And what's going on in our country and our world? And, and you say, Jesus Christ is coming back. And we don't know where, but you might want to look around at the conditions of the world. If you would have ever thought we'd be in a time where the government's controlling everything like right now, most of us would have said, no, no way. It's the first time it's ever happened. And so if we look at, and then we, we also have other countries shut down, and we're all kind of following the same guidelines. You know, we started with two weeks, then longer, then, then some are going into May, some are longer. But the point is, they're all talking to each other. It, it's one world. It's a one world situation. So, by the way, Jesus died for the sins of the world, not for the sins of America or Egypt or Jerusalem or anywhere else. He died for the sins of the world. So, what we think about is huge. I'm, I'm just praying, you know, that God help me to just focus on what you're doing through this time and during this difficult time I need to be reaching forward Jesus said go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation he who believes and is baptized shall be saved Mark 16 15 so until Jesus comes I should be out preaching and sharing the word so this is just another opportunity to do that and to be the salt of the earth and so it's a difficult time but the message didn't change nor anything else. So that's where we are today. So I wanted to share that, just encouraging you to think. Maybe you need to call a friend, call someone in the church, say, hey, you know, help me pray with me on this. I'm struggling right now. Help me to start thinking about those things that are true, pure, and thinking about the return of Christ and about Jesus dying on the cross for my sins. And, and God will snap you out of it as you begin to think about him. Psalm 139, he knows us. That's a great one to read right now. If you're struggling right now with depression, read Psalm 139. Ask God to encourage you. But it's all about the things we think about. And I might even say, you might need to take a break from the news. We, we feel like if we miss it, we're going to miss something. It's pretty much, no, this every day is the same, except giving you more numbers. Where maybe you just think about the Lord and take a few minutes and open up the book of Psalms and read and pray and, uh, and, and have that drive as much as the drive to watch news. I've got to watch the news. i got to see what's happening in L.A. I talked to a friend today. He used to be a greeter in our church. Uh, Dennis Sims, he's a HVAC contractor in L.A. And he's downtown. I called him. He's on Santa Monica Boulevard. He goes, it's so deserted that I can get from here to, I can get from Santa Monica to Mission Hills in 20 minutes day or night but he's still working I mean thank God he's working so the difference is thinking, thinking about the Lord and the Lord during this time the freeway is empty but the Lord is still in heaven the Lord is there so think about those things that are good again I'm not a positive thinking preacher but I'm kind of becoming more one only because I've seen so much negativity and if you're thinking about Jesus, if you call that positive, then okay. I mean, it's not that you're just thinking positive, just to be positive. But it's thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ and sharing him with others. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for giving us, Lord, an attitude of thinking about those things of Jesus Christ. And we do pray for people during this time. People are struggling, Lord. People are are hurting over what's going on. And I pray that you just turn them towards you, that they would begin to think about you. And if there's anyone who doesn't know you, I pray that even today they would call on you for salvation, repent of their sins, and begin to see that this world is not all there is. So Lord, be with us, guide us, and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen.